the semi-final action of the Unibet Champions League of Darts coming to you from the Motor Point Arena in the magnificent capital city of Cardiff! And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our BBC sports viewers and the millions joining us around the world who will join Mensah Sulevich in the grand final, we're about to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet the players. And it's time to meet a legend. The reigning and defending Unibet Champions League champion. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the on the stage once again. A place in the Champions League final to play against Mensa Sulevich awaits either Phil Taylor or Gary Anderson. Our commentators for this one are Paul and George. Thank you, what an atmosphere, what an atmosphere. The defending champion Phil Taylor, hungry for anything and everything, it seems, that he can cram into his overflowing trophy cabinet in these, his final few months as a professional darts player, 16 times a world champion, the greatest there has ever been. And we saw, didn't we, this afternoon, the fire is still very much there in that ill-tempered scrap with Michael Van Gerwen a little earlier on. As for Gary Anderson, well, he scraped in, he salvaged his semi-final place by the skin of his teeth, really. Eight match darts came and went for Peter Wright, Anderson doesn't say no to chances like that. Twice a world champion, he thrives on these big occasions. And a slow start this weekend, but full steam ahead now, it seems, for the flying Scotsman. What a contest this is in store. First to 11 plays surprise package, Mensor Suljevic for the title. First leg for to throw first. Game on. Well, as the puppy George Noble gets us underway, Phil has won the bullseye, so he's going to throw first in leg one, and potentially the very last leg. 59. I thought we were going all the way in the last one, I really did, but the brilliance of the Austrian, Mensa Zulevic, gave us a real champagne shot and has just set this tournament on fire. I've just seen him backstage as well. He's shaking, he doesn't know whether to laugh or cry or just have a stiff drink. Mensor Suljevic, what a story this has been. And he's waiting in the final. 
But one of these two greats, 18 world titles between them. Easy for Phil Taylor in his final season, bringing down the curtain on a glittering career against Gary Anderson. Yeah, earlier on, it was a bit gritty between Phil and Michael Van Gerwen, but you're not going to have any of that tonight because Gary Anderson has the utmost respect for the power. Every game they have ever had has had a lot of respect. They have shared a World Championship final, which Gary Anderson won, one of the greatest matches of all time. And who's to say that in a slightly shorter format, these guys can't serve up another classic? Taylor with the darts, then, and a marginal advantage, too. It's a brilliant atmosphere. A little bit flat at times, isn't it, this afternoon, but Cardiff has come to life for this tonight. It certainly has. The last game has got us going. This will get Phil going, if he can hit a double 16. Gets it, denies Anderson a shot at Shanghai in the first leg. Great start for the 16-time world champion. The Taylor eye is in. Very early on, which is always an ominous sign for his opponent. There was, as you mentioned, a real mingle in that match with Michael Van Gerwen this afternoon. He was waiting to interview Phil after the victory, and he wasn't happy, let's put it that way. That isn't the last we've heard of that rivalry. Yes, the days of Phil Taylor's career are numbered. Michael Van Gerwen wants to have the last laugh. There are a couple of tournaments left for Phil Taylor, the Grand Slam of darts, and the World Championship, two of the biggest tournaments in the world. They could clash again, but right now he's worried about Gary Anderson. The scoring of Anderson has got to be at its premium. He's got to give himself a lot of shots of doubles to take Taylor out tonight, I feel. Yes, Taylor said Anderson would score heavily tonight. He would pepper the 180s. Well, that's cursed it. 41. Well, they had the same shot to go for. Anderson will admit that wasn't his best effort, but now Phil Taylor will have a shot at the bullseye for a tuna lead and a break of throw. Gets it. Is Taylor on the way to the final with Sulevich? Great, great start. A wry smile from Gary Anderson. Game on. Loose darts are only really costly mistakes when they are punished like that. You've got to have a look at the lie of the dart of Phil Taylor because the double 16 that he hit in the first leg and the bullseye that he's just hit, you get a really good insight as to how his darts look in the board. 43. You just see the dart in the bullseye from the point, but the rest of the dart is lying towards the double 15. It's a crazy angle, but over his career, he's made it work. Let's have this. another look. It's very unorthodox, but we've said that about Phil Taylor for years. He's unorthodox, but brilliant, and that's exactly what Sulevich is like. Well, you recall when he first started throwing the, the reverse stacker darts into that treble 20 bed. We've not really seen the like of that before. He started the reverse stack revolution. He got Raymond van Barneveld on it. It cost Phil Taylor a world title in 2007. But he has made it his own, and other people have adopted it, but maybe not as well as he has. So the reverse stack, as we see, basically... Well, you're the expert, but he, he's, he drops them in, kind of defying gravity. Yeah, the conventional stacking technique is what Gary Anderson does. Has an upright angle, the point, and then the upright angle of the flight. But as you can see with Phil's, it goes the other way. The flight goes low, so he wants to land them on top of each other. 59, Gary require 170. It's the big one for Anderson to take out. Hello. Oh! 145. 
It's the biggest Louis fish Rimbaud, of the lot when it comes to finishing. He almost hooked it in. But Taylor, to compound the misery of Anderson in this semi-final, needs tops, and it's a beautiful lie. And he didn't use it. I'm shocked. Well, very early, but you already feel these needs to land. And he has. Crucial dart. Nailed it, did Gary Anderson. Gary to throw first. And immediately Gable. cancels out the break. The one thing we've seen from Gary Anderson over the last three or four years, when he's been at his very best one like this, is his ability to live with the best and fight with the best. He is arguably the heaviest hitter in 180s with Dave Chisel in the world. But he seems to have taken it to the next level in World Championships and really big finals. Both players throwing upwards of 100 average already. 60. Although that's just dipped after that visit from, uh, there we are, from Gary Anderson. So a little readjustment from Phil. And back to normal. 130. Coming into this semi-final, you have to admit that Anderson has actually played better than Phil. His average was better. 100. His scoring average was better. Well, he had to after the start he had in the group. He had to. Uh, he had to find his game very quick. He's got a knack of doing that, Gary, in group stage formats, losing his first game and managing three. to get Gary through. That was a loose visit from Taylor, 43 only, so treble 17 here. Leaves bullseye for a 1-6-1. Not even going for it. You can tell sometimes in Gary's eyes just how much he's up for something. You can see how focused he is right now. He is on the money when it comes to focus. And after 12 darts on tops, very good darts. He'll take a 14 darter, he'll take a 15 darter, he gets a 15 darter. First two legs to Taylor and two on the spin for Anderson. 2-2, two, two. first to 11. Into the Champions League of Darts final. Taylor, the defending champion. Oh, and they're great darts from Gary Anderson. Brilliant start to the leg. The standard is getting better with the leg. They're egging each other on, and Gary Anderson is very close to five perfect darts there. But he's piling the pressure on the greatest player of all time. Gary Anderson is up for this. He's in the flying Scotsman zone, but so is the power. This is wonderful scoring. You called it right. They're dragging each other along. It's like a distance run. Mo Farah breaks, says, are you coming with me? That's what these two are doing. Taylor can't finish, but Anderson... The insurance policy shot is 20s. Dull 15. Splits it and has a dart that he can't use at a double. Taylor now has tops to get the lead again. Reprieve for Phil. He thought that was in, he was walking to collect the dart. The crowd let him know. Tens. 20. Gary eight. Well, the crowd had turned a little bit there. And Gary doesn't hesitate. Three on the spin for the flying Scotsman. And he reels him in. Like Gary, Gary Anderson's in the lead. Well, a nice exchange between the two, but Phil will be furious inside, and that's compounded by Anderson. Three more perfect darts. A lot of people have been talking over the last year or two about Anderson's place as the greatest Scottish player of all time. 
He has the same amount of world titles as the great Jockey Wilson. And at which point do we start calling him the great Gary Anderson? Got to remember that Gary is no spring chicken anymore. He may look to start slowing his career down in the next few years, but the way he plays, we really don't want that. We want him to stick around and score so many more of those characteristic maximum shots. That was very uncharacteristic, very loose 45 from Anderson. Taylor not doing anything to make him play. Good last start. Anderson's partner, Rachel, expecting their second child anytime soon. You were telling me earlier today, Paul, he's normally a very good sleeper. He hasn't had much sleep the last few days or so. Not at all. Taylor needs treble 18. Gets treble 18. It's the bullseye again. That one's got a bit too much juice on it. Gary Anderson will go tops, tops. Or maybe 25 in bullseye instead. Hasn't got either. And a real bag of nails shot. Gifts Taylor two shots at a double to take this leg. Well, what a mess of a visit that was from Anderson. Taylor with two 16s. For 3-3. Three, three. No. 17. Gary Rewire, 55. So, Gary Anderson for four successive legs. Double 10. Miles off. Gary Rewire, 32. Another crack at double 16. Needs to go to the right. That is majorly awkward. The second dart covered the entire Gary bed. Gary Anderson cannot believe his luck. He's got the cash in now. Does so. 4-2 Anderson. Four on the spin, and he's the one that's skipping right now. Well, he's been played in a completely different spirit to Phil's previous match against Michael Van Gerwen, which was uh, niggly at times, bad-tempered certainly afterwards as well. These two sharing a joke, as if to say, well, do you want to win it? Do I want to win it? Someone's going to have to finish this. Even though there was bad blood this afternoon during the game, Phil was the one that was smiling the whole time. He's not smiling right now because he's staring down 4-2 deficit and he's not playing as well as he was this afternoon. He's only averaging 92 and a half. Gary's only on 95, but he is playing better right now. And this is a big leg. Final leg before the first break. It's Taylor's throw. If he can't hold, 100. he's going to be three down at the turnaround. And the advantage has gone already. Ominous, 100. ominous darts from Gary Anderson. That first dart, when it goes in, he aims the first dart, then he has a natural flow with the second and third. That's why he's such a heavy scorer. And right now, he's found his range and he's using it really well. Treble 18. Just look to lay it up. He'll come back for a two darter, but now this... He might have to hit this. He isn't going to do so. so. Anderson will have minimum one dart at a double to be in front by three legs. Treble 20 leaves double four for a 5-2 lead. What a turnaround. Taylor was powering. Two legs to nil and missing nothing. And Anderson has reeled off five on the spin. Erratic finishing from Taylor. And Phil has an early hill to climb. It Every single one of his group games, but only by one or two legs. He is three behind here hey, to the flying Gary Scotsman. And he needs to turn it on, the power. If he is, he's going to book his place in the final and look to retain the Champions League 100. of Darts title. So far, so good for the Scotsman. And at 2-0 down, if you'd have said to him 5-2 at the break, he might not have believed you. But believe it, Gary, it's yours to lose now. Oh, 
we have seen on a number of occasions. 60. Big TV titles won in the PDC by people who have survived match darts. It's seen it this year. Michael Van Gerwen in the final of the Premier League, surviving those six darts and Peter Wright. But Gary Anderson has done it himself a couple of times. Back in 2014, the year where he was winning pretty much everything, on his way to his first world title, he won the Premier League. Dave Chisnell had three darts to knock him out in the semis. In the Players' Championship finals, that last tournament before the Worlds, 130 Christian Kist had a dart to beat him in the very first round. Once you get that bit of luck, it can be written in the stars. 140. I might need a bit of luck. I might go and look what's in his pockets. Might be a few rabbit's feet in there. What he's got, though, is amazing ability when he needs it. And that has absolutely piled the pressure on Taylor in this leg. There is no luck involved in that visit from Gary Anderson. Double 18 for a 13 data to start this session in exactly the manner he would have hoped. Lining him up outside. And the last one finds the mark. Maybe Gary Anderson thinks that his name is on this trophy. He's had some good fortune today in his other match. But maybe he thinks to himself. I've got the legs to go all the way here. I won the last tournament I played in. I want revenge against Sulevic. Yes, Mensur Sulevic, the man who was 6 0 up on Gary Anderson in their opening group stage game yesterday as the power. Some way off with that last dart. I've got to admit, Dan, I have been looking at Phil's darts over the last few legs and I think. The angle of entry is a little bit more pronounced than it was earlier in the week. I think they're kicking to the right a bit more, and it's making some of his lies a little bit more awkward. The double 16s that he missed earlier on, I said that after the first start it was awkward because his dart's kicking to that angle, it shields the rest of the bed. And the second dart was a, a really crazy ricochet. Well, it is an area of the board he uses a lot, Phil Taylor. Makes it all the more important for him to hit it first dart. But Anderson has left the 170. He had a crack at this earlier on. The 7-2. And a stranglehold on this game. The Flying Scotsman. Oh! 145. Do you require 39? I genuinely thought that was going to go... That could have broken Phil Taylor in half. Now he needs a really good dart over the top of that one. and doesn't get it. And the crowd are getting on Phil Taylor's back here. They want Gary to win by the sounds of it. Double eight. He gets it. It's clinical. Flying Scotsman is flying all right. Seven consecutive legs for Gary Anderson from 2-0 down. Forever. Phil Taylor has never been in this position in the Champions League of Darts. He was imperious in the inaugural year last year. Won every single game, including two, against the world number one, Michael Van Gerwen. He has already dispatched Van Gerwen here today. But the world number two may well succeed where the world number one failed. And bring Phil Taylor's dominance in this competition to a pretty shuddering halt. Phil Taylor has had a bit of bother on double 16 in the past when he's made equipment changes and it's taken him a little bit of time to find the spot in front of his eye to throw from to hit that target but these darts that he's using now to great effect on that visit he's been using them for a while and he won the world match player with them so no excuses there really a fourth maximum for Gary Anderson following Phil Taylor all I'm going to say about that one, 80 Dan, is that that third dart went in like there were 99 people in a wall in a free kick, and he still got it in. 146. Well, he knows he's going to have another visit, please. But Gary Anderson is bossing this game. 100. I've mentioned on a few occasions that sometimes it'll be the last time you'll see these guys play each other. 
maybe Gary thinks this might be the last time I get a crack at the power. Oh, I want Gary to leave a mark. 46. Tops for eight. On the spin. 26. A reprieve, but it's still a ton plus checkout for Tate. 120. How many times in his career has he hit a 120? Needs to lift it by an inch and a half. Not enough. 60. Gary required 20. Is the Powers race run? Yeah, it's looking very good for Gary. Gary, Gary Anderson. 8 2 in front, Robert. 10 legs down. Game on. Phil Taylor doesn't just need snookers, he needs a few more sporting things as well. Well, I think Phil Taylor has put his darts in his pocket there. Ooh, That's a 177. He thought there was a break. He is discombobulated by this. He doesn't know what's going on, the power. 140. We've been taking a break after 10 legs through the group stages. Maybe he thought there was a break there. Sorry, Phil, there wasn't. But your reply to putting your darts in your pocket was rather good. You should stick him in his pocket before he visit. Gary's one of those guys in the last 10 years who has been able to live with Phil at his best. Mentioned with Jason earlier that they played each other in a TV final 10 years ago, and Gary won that final very well. 45, we were quite 86. Well, to stop the rot, to try and arrest this momentum that the Flying Scotsman has built up. It's an 11 dart, it's exactly what the power needed, but he's only a tiny step on a very, very long comeback trial. And a somewhat quizzical look at that double 16 when he hits it first dart, as if to say, where have you been? You've been my friend for so many years. We're not speaking tonight. Funny how that segment is green. Well, look, you mentioned that. TV final international darts league. Gary Anderson beat Phil Taylor a decade ago. He came up, that's what he wanted. 100. He saw Taylor was the greatest. He wanted to test himself against the greatest, and he did, and he beat him. Years later, he won his first PDC world title, beating Phil Taylor in a, in a magnificent final. 100. But one thing Gary will take from that, I remember Gary Anderson winning one of the sets towards the end of the game, walking off and making a hand gesture like it was done. I have buried him, I've got this game won. 16. And Taylor came back and took it to a deciding set. Gary Anderson knows from experience that Taylor can come back. He rattled off five straight legs against Adrian Lewis to win his game here this weekend. He rattled off five straight here. Gary Anderson's got problems. Gary also knows that when he's got his back against the wall, he can call upon that fantastic scoring power when he needs it. He's been in a world final with this gentleman, had three dots on the floor and still managed to win the set. Well, it's a good setup, but Anderson quite capable of seeing this off for 9-3. Well, I think if he hit the 60 there, that 64. was leg over. He's the best double 40. 12 hitter in the world, Gary Anderson. But he needs Taylor to miss, he's but he doesn't. Taylor's doing things right now, asking a couple of questions of the Scotsman and maybe a gesture to try and break the focus of the flying Scotsman. This is what he did against Michael Van Gerwen earlier to great effect. Yeah, MVG didn't seem to like it. Gary Anderson has just smirked it off. Two on the spin for the power. It's a start. 100. And now, after the crowd have been singing Gary Anderson's name and it looked like Cardiff was supporting the Flying Scotsman, now we're hearing a few strains of walking in a Taylor Wonderland around the Motor Point Arena. Fickle bunch darts fans. We've been all around Europe, Dan, watching many a dart player. If it's a good song, they will sing it. If he's a good player, they will support him. To be fair, they still sing Phil Taylor's name. We haven't seen him on the European Tour stage as Rangers. Just a catchy little ditty. Same goes for Gary Anderson. He doesn't actually play in the European Tour anymore. They still sing his name. 95.
I think that little gesture from Phil Taylor has knocked Gary Anderson out of his focus just for a few moments. Crowd in full voice, singing the name of the greatest player in this sport's history. But is his campaign coming to an end in the semi-finals? This for a third straight leg. Double 16, 74. and that went in at a crazy angle, that dot. Gary needed a maximum to leave. The Anderson double 12, but now Phil has three clear darts to rectify the previous visit and gets it. Anderson's got to get his focus back. He's got the throw. I feel he needs to get back on the winning trail or Taylor is after him. Well, we've got another break at the end of this leg. It looked for a moment at 8-2, but Gary Anderson might win this with a session to spare. But Taylor has dug deep, and 8-6. That is not an insurmountable obstacle. Yeah, you've got to give credit to Taylor over the last few legs. He's done oh, enough to get closer to Anderson and just rattled him a little bit. Gary really wants this leg. And if he can nick it going into the break, he'll feel, yeah, that's 16. all right with me. Sometimes players do look to break these games down into whatever length session they've got and just try and win each session. You win every session, you've got to win the match. Now, it's three apiece in this session at the minute. And this is a crucial, crucial leg. And Taylor is some way off the pace right now. Needs another treble, gets another treble. We spoke to both guys asking their, their favourites and their... Yeah, likes and dislikes for certain formats of the game. Well, both guys prefer set format. And like you say, Dan, if they're breaking things down, Anderson's looking just to get the last leg of this set right now so he can go into the break and put on an assault coming back from the break. And see this off in two. Double 18. And double 18 is there. Gary Anderson does take an important 14th leg. 9-5 to the Flying Scotsman, two away from the final on a rematch with Mensur Suljevic. The power isn't done yet, but his perfect record at the Champions League of Darts may be coming to an end in the semis. Game on. Phil Taylor, one session to try and preserve his 100% record and keep alive his hopes of retaining this title. But Gary Anderson, the world number two, needs just two more legs on the PDC circuit we play a lot of best of 11 darts 99 to put that into perspective Phil Taylor now has to beat Gary Anderson 6-1 or 6 love that's rather difficult considering Gary Anderson's 85. pedigree over that format yeah you don't often see just a 1 or a 0 next to Gary Anderson's name on the score sheet well, this weekend we have seen someone take six legs off him in a row and it was the guy who's in the final. I can only ever remember anyone doing that once before in a leg format game and that was Joe Cullen. 17. It's fair to say I don't think Gary Anderson was feeling his greatest that day. But he looks on it today, that's an unfortunate deflection. Similar finishes here. Not going to go the week. 1 4 2. 100. That's a really good shuffle across the hockey from Gary Anderson. Taylor's not going to take this out. And I'd put my house 50. on the fact that Gary will go 2 for double top here. Single 15 is an option, but it's not the one you'd advise. 
Double ten it is then. 22. Who are you going 96? By virtue of the fact that Gary missed the two, I've now lost my house. He may lose the leg, Anderson, if Taylor can clean up this 96. Stay there. It's not in. 48. Gary Uruguay, 20. Well, and Taylor missing a number at the end there as well, and it may cost him, but it doesn't matter because Anderson moves to within one leg of the final. And Phil Taylor, there is no margin for error anymore. It is six on the spin, or that is it for the power. Here he goes. Looking to crescendo this match in the best possible way. And I have to echo what we said earlier, the angle of entry of Phil's darts in this match, they've not been his liking. He's had to make a lot of adjustments that he doesn't usually have to do. Gary wants a nine darter in the very last leg, but he's not going to get it. He's not, but four perfect darts to start this leg has given him a fantastic chance to close it out right now. And Phil Taylor, spectacular last year beat michael van Gogh in twice he's been superb so far this year 100. beating mvg again and topping his group he has won every single game at this tournament over the two years we've had it until this semi-final and anderson is looking to send him home and end taylor's champions league of darts career 54. you've got to think it's all over Anderson, six darts at 1-1-5. Will he only need three? It's double top for the match. The Scotsman 95. will be back. Well, it's a match dart missed. He survived eight against Peter Wright. I mean, we could see something similar over the next five and a half legs. But the likelihood is that the Flying Scotsman closes this out now. Double five. Fifteen. Well, there was an exchange after Gary's last visit. It's all very relaxed up there right now. I guarantee you that Phil is trying to psych him out a little bit and just make him question his next visit if he gets one. Taylor needs treble 19. It's like he's at an exhibition. I've never seen the like, Dan Dawson. 97. Yeah, really haven't. Five. Well, it may be an exit for the Champions League for Phil Taylor. It seems to be a good-natured one. Double one. No score. It goes on. Who you require? 52. There is a word uttered in the darts world sometimes that begins with a T. It's called tactics. Taylor has played this leg like a fiddle. It'll only work if he hits double eight and he does. He's still fighting and he's making Gary question whether he can cross the line. Six match starts by my count, as well as a few comments from Phil Taylor that Gary Anderson has had to sit through in that match or that leg. And Taylor is still alive, somehow. I know Gary, Gary Anderson very, very well. And he's a money-hungry dart player. When there's money on the line, he wants the check. And he won't like these tactics, but he'll not let Phil Taylor see that. He just wants to get over the line, cash the check, and go and get the rest of the money as well. Well... His recent win in Perth down under, Gary Anderson, took him to just over £3 million in prize money accumulated over his career. And he has a very real chance of adding £100,000 to that this weekend. 50 grand just for making the final. Well, he was having another crack at the nine darter there. After dart five, it was all sugar I missed. But Phil, in characteristic way, has left a bogey number. Gary Anderson is steaming for the line. 130. 
51 left after nine for Gary Anderson after missing handfuls of match darts. It's a phenomenal response. Great setup shot oh, from no, Phil no, no, Taylor, no, no, but they may be the last ever dancey foes in the Champions League because double top. 31. Oh my word. My Good word, word. Gary Anderson. 32. A bit of white line fever for the Flying Scotsman, he just can't hit the winning double. Double 16 for Taylor. How does he hit it from there? Oh! No score. That crazy angle of entry has come to haunt. Phil Taylor once more, it's double 10 for Anderson, he gets it. He's finally over the line. The Flying Scotsman flies through to play Mensa Sunovic in the final. Taylor's streak is over. He goes to retirement with a defeat in the Champions League of Darts to the second best player in the world, the man with the tartan sleeve. He shoots forward to try and get that £100,000 check and that trophy. Well, the